Ride to Hell Retribution is one of the finest examples of what happens when game development goes wrong. The game was developed by Eutechnics and was originally planned to be a huge open world game. Set in the 1960s, featuring rival biker gangs and an awesome story about revenge. Imagine the first part of San Andreas set in the desert with motorbike gangs instead of OGs. Sounds pretty good, right? I think so. I would have loved that game. This is not what we ended up with. So instead of a huge explorable world, a wide range of motorbikes to drive around on, varied and fun hand-to-hand -hand combat, and great gunplay with a large arsenal of era-fitting weapons, we get Ride to Hell Retribution. This stillborn abomination features some of the worst controlling linear vehicle sections I've ever experienced. Even racing games from the Mega Drive era control easier than this. It is inexplicably bad. The game's story is so bananas, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw it ripening in a tree. You can see what it's going for. The whole bringing an army of killers down from the bottom, checking a name off the list every step of the way, becoming an infamous force to be reckoned with. But the way they go about it is just... Ugh. Literally three people just appear partway through this story and you kill them shortly later just for padding. The combat is laughable. I beat this game by literally spamming the A button over and over again until I realised I could just shoot people in the face when the game was trying to force me into a melee situation. The one satisfying thing about that is that when you get a headshot they die instantly and you get like a slow-mo effect. That's literally the one thing and it doesn't always work. The coup de grado is the women in this game. Now I'm not someone who gets offended on behalf of others for sport or anything like half the people on twitter flying off the handle about every little thing but my god pretty much every single woman you meet in this game is getting roughed up by some guy or a group of guys and then we kill said guy for being a scumbag good job that's what you should encourage not beating women but then the woman immediately has sex with you like you'll be in the middle of a mission and you'll probably fuck that woman on the corpses you made saving her fully clothed i know you don't believe me and it's fine we will get to it i will show you because i've completed this game for some reason and i have a lot of footage and that open world by the way you have the hub town which is being fucking generous, that actually has boundaries that reset you if you try and explore too far in one direction. While you're still in the town. And the rest of the time is spent driving down the most ridiculous set pieces I've ever seen. Like nonsensical visual cacophonies of madness. Whoever made these roads and looked at it and said, yep, ship it, needs their fucking head checked, seriously. When you're not ricocheting down the bad fairground ride that this game tries to call a highway, you're spending a lifetime running through shooting galleries that look like they came out of the fucking unreal asset store thinking about it this game might actually work better as a fairground simulator by the way do you want to know how long this game took me to beat 11 fucking hours that's right 11 hours of this shit and the reason difficulty no nope. engaging and well thought out story no nope. the missions were kind of more so the endlessly repeating hallways and arenas of goons that you have to fight your way through with no skill or pace no joke one of these missions took me an hour to get from one end of this shit to the other just to fight the boss. I could sit here all day and rattle off the never-ending crazy choices this game has made, but instead, why don't we take a cheeky look at some Amazon reviews? Five stars. Awesome. I can't believe how awesome this was. Truly a masterpiece of our generation. Perfect gift for all ages. Legendary. Epicness. I loved it. Nobody makes games with this type of material and humor. Thanks. Try it. You're gonna like it. Awesome. Never seen any action games that allows connect interaction. This is revolutionary as you are in there and it does not cause stomach aches due to AI. Try this. I actually just had to go check on the box to make sure this game isn't connect compatible. <laughs> I've now experienced perfection. This game is literally the greatest thing I've ever done with my life. This game is the best game ever made, hands down. The game looks amazing. For half a sec, I thought I was watching actual 1080p Blu-ray video, but the graphics are actually just that good. It looks better than anything on the PS4 or Xbox One, and oh my god, the story. I swear I thought this was a Steven Spielberg game at first. It's about a real personable badass named Jake, who just got back from Vietnam and he's ready to beat some ass. Now that original story is just the tip of the iceberg. After a sick Harley chase through some construction, Jake's brother gets- Whoa, 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 spoilers bro, spoilers. I don't want to spoil any more of the game for you, but trust me. This is literally the best game ever made, and you should buy it now. I'm just praying for Ride to Hell 2 for me to pre-order. Well, I mean, they all sound pretty glowing. So let's take a look at this five-star extravaganza, shall we? Alright then, so straight out the gate we have some issues here. The medium skill is called Badass Biker, but the description says, 
you've got some balls, a challenge in difficulty, but the only other option is called Easy Rider, so I'm guessing that's Easy Mode, which describes itself as you're new and scared, the easiest difficulty. Well, fuck you, I'll go for Badass Normal then, I guess. So we click New Game, and this is how the game starts. That was completely unedited, by the way. So the game shows you a quick clip of you riding a bike, then before you know it, you plunk straight into a turret section, which as we all know, is one of the worst tropes of the 2000s. But what's weird is I swear I only barely get hit a few times and I die straight away. Right, fuck you then. So about a minute of turret later, and... <laughs> okay. Now we're thrown into a fucking quick time event. It's like this game is just running down the list of tropes nice and early to get rid of as many players as possible straight away. So only the morbidly curious and stupid may continue. Luckily, I'm both. Alright, so who the fuck is this guy then? You think this is it? I'm the last one. This is ah! Oh, and now we're jumping a fucking helicopter, are we? Why would that helicopter be flying there? Oh, title card. And straight into a loading screen. Jesus Christ. Right, now knowing what I am cursed to know about this game, this is actually some bizarre attempt at a Tarantino-styled intro. You know, like highlights and snippets of the character's journey to get you excited about what's to come. But it's done so fucking badly and so jarringly that it doesn't land at all. Also, there's about ten and a half hours missing there, mate. So that's not fair warning at all. Also, I had to look this up and I had a lot more fun doing that than playing this game. But this 1% patch over here, I thought this was some kind of hilarious thing, like the game knew the actual review scores it would be getting ahead of time but what this actually means is that the club member whose jacket that patch is attached to operates outside of the american motorcyclist association or the ama it means that 99 percent of the members of the ama uphold the law but this particular biker is in the one percent that are outlaws the more you know Okay, plot time boys, strap in for some serious exposition dumps. So we have our main character over here, you can tell because he's still in the same clothes. He gets dismissed from the army after his time in the Vietnam War. He goes back to his hometown and we're introduced to his uncle Mac. The town is also lovingly named Dead End, by the way. Why don't it just hit me in the face with a shovel? It would be a bit more subtle. Also, I'll point this out now, but what the fuck is up with these models? Like, why are their hands so comically big? You keep an eye out for that. Some of them are fucking ridiculous. You look like shit, Jake. Yeah, I feel like shit, Mac. Welcome, old boy. Amazing banter between the boys there. You've gotten to be one tall sack of shit. Now we're introduced to Jake's little brother, Mikey. You look the same too, Jake. But face is, is kind of weird. Yeah, you got that right. He's an annoying little prick that I'm certain absolutely nothing bad will happen to in the next five minutes. Swear to God, I'd rather be polishing boots than sit through this crap. <laughs> Jesus Christ, the game's self-aware. So Mikey has stormed off and we're tasked to go and follow him. Welcome to the driving sections. Imagine those levels from Crash Bandicoot 3 if that game was made by idiots. The bike is constantly accelerating, by the way, so you have no way to stop. And the bike also bounces around like a fucking ping pong ball whenever you get near any obstacle. And look at these roads. Why is the construction going on on every inch of this road? Why would Mickey come this way? Is he insane? Well, it seems like it might not be his fault, actually, because every road in this non-disclosed location is like this. Oh, and I fucking failed the mission because there was too much gap between us. Oh, God. After an arbitrary distance has been covered, we catch up and have this amazing conversation. Get lost. Why did you what? Up? Jesus, Mike. I've been gone, okay? I can't hear you. I don't know what the hell's going on between you and that. You're different, Jake. What? But we're a family. Oh look! Something's happening to Mikey. Who would have thought? You know how to move, Tony. Absolutely stellar acting there, lads. What is happening? Yeah, this is like a 
skinny little old baby cow, ain't he? <laughs> you ever slice an ear off on a baby cow? They scream and scream. It's funny. Who the fuck Mikey, wrote this? I got your burger. Let's go. Looks like you've been summoned, boy. Run on home now. Hey! Stop! Where'd you get that cut? What's that about? A lot of stuff about the symbol on your back you don't know. Like what? Dad must have left us with Mac for a reason, right? I got a feeling it has to do with those fuckers back there. Who were they? The Devil's Hands. Oh, straight into a cutscene in some exposition we can't hear. And, uh... Wait, what? What the fuck? Well, your eyes are not deceiving you, but this is how all of the motorbike combat works. You get rubber banded to hell and back while they pull alongside you. You mash a button a few times and they fall off the bike and the bike explodes. Fucking epic, I guess. Anyway, we arrive and we're somehow immediately held up at gunpoint with the best threat I've ever heard. Don't you move now, Cherry. No, I'm just going to let this scene play out. Grab some tissues for the emotions you're about to feel. Time to put that fucking piece down, cowboy. It's going to be okay, Mikey. That gun's getting a bit heavy for you, wouldn't you say? As I was asking before, we want to know where the boy here got his cut from. Would be nice to know who you are, too. It's nobody's. It's just a jacket. Look, lad. This is the part where you beg for his life. You understand? He's just a kid. It seems like we're reaching an understanding here. Let me put it plain. Retribution should be dead and buried. You don't tell me where you got this jacket. The same thing will happen to this child. Last chance, lad. Tell him. Jake, please tell him. It's our dads, okay? It's our fucking dads. And who might your father be? <laughs> William Conway. Toledo Conway? No! <laughs> Let's roll the fuck out of Dodge. Finish him! Nothing, Mac. Mikey's gone. Now I'm gonna hunt down. I can safely say I've never been so moved by a piece of media in my entire life. I'd break down his genius shot for shot, but I genuinely don't think I have the capabilities to do so. It's so well written, and we also have about 10 hours to fucking go. <laughs> So without any sort of time frame for how long it's been since Mikey got killed, we're then thrown into another cutscene basically saying, go here, kill man. And we have another god awful bike section. Oh, there's also a boost. 
After what was no lie, a five minute drive to nowhere, we arrive at an airplane graveyard. We have an altercation with this young man, and this is where I quickly discover that all you have to do to win fights in this game is mash A and occasionally push X. The only way I can describe it is like the Arkham games, but absolutely shit. Once they've been beaten, Jake shows that he's now a homicidal maniac, and Curb elbow drops this dude. Time to pay Carlos. Which causes a fountain of blood? Right, after what I find a rather harrowing conversation with a prostitute and a drug dealer, we are shown the skeleton of what would have clearly been part of the open world, except it's here now and it's barren and full of dead ends that lead nowhere. There's literally nothing here, not even any traffic, but hark, look at this fucking run animation. Right, strap yourself in lads, this is not how real women work in the world, okay? You remember that. So we've just beaten a man, to death. You have to and this happens. So Jakey four pumps over here, saves a woman, dry humps her to death, and the game just plonks me back outside with no heads up of what's happening. I'm getting dizzy already, and that was only the first of many. <sighs> Eventually, and for seemingly no reason, I head over to this corner on the second floor, and Anvil appears out of one of these rooms, and we have to chase him. So you know what that means. You may be thinking, at least in these bike sections, when you're actually chasing someone, you can't lose because the game never stops us moving forward. Well, to make up for that fact, the game has some of the craziest rubber banding I've ever seen in my entire life and throws infinite bikers at you for Jake to tickle. I actually also did manage to fail this mission because of a power slide gone wrong. And he gets away, even though he's right there. I can fucking see him, he's right there. So we follow him over to this shutter. So that should be it, right? Open the door and we get him. No, 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 no. We have some casual misogyny. Uh, I don't ever recall seeing a woman fixing a truck before. And a fucking side quest to get into this bitch. Uh, it saddens me that that sentence is a double entendre. So this lovely lady's husband is spending all of her money that he stole on getting wasted all the time. So we have to drive over there for another long-winded and combat-filled stretch of road and teach him a lesson. And once we've done that, guess what happens? So Jakey Dry Humps cannot believe the day he's having, and it's beginning to show a little. And we meet Tyrell, who is basically Mr. T, fucking Mr. Tyrell, and he introduces us to guns. Now, I'm not a terrible shot with a controller, but fuck me. It's so fucking hard to aim, like the fucking clunky movement of it is horrible. We meet Mac outside, and he seems to have forgotten his textures, and we have our first real mission. So you know how in games like Mafia 3, for example, when you reach the point where you're about to go take down one of the big kimpins, you have to battle your way through a shitload of goons to get to that person? That makes sense, right? Well, this game tries to do that, but misses the mark completely. There's no more than one way to ever approach these sections. You just have to shoot your way through and they take forever. This section took me at least 20 minutes and it felt like twice the length because it's just fucking bland, shitty cover shooting. There'll be many more of these, by the way. Fuck me. We find Anvil in the lift and he just fucks off because why not? So I guess I just ran all the way up here for no reason and we have to take the world's slowest lift back down. Did you see that? I just got shot in a cutscene, by the way. Anyway, these Jason Voorhees motherfuckers, they have a hockey mask on, and they take nine headshots and a world-destroying explosive barrel to die. Why? I don't know. Maybe that's the reason Jason is unkillable, based solely on the fact that he has a hockey mask on. <sighs> Max forgot his textures again. I must have lost his balance and let Anvil get away. So now we're in Max's sidecar, and... Where the fuck did we get that gun? Now this leads into one of the worst turret sections I've ever had the misfortune of being part of. The camera swings so wildly when Mac takes a turn that this um, boss fight is 10 times harder than it ever should have been. You have to shoot Anvil while Mac no textures over here is spinning around like a fucking waltzer and you're on a 58 second time limit. Why 58? Who played this and thought this was worth money? Hmm? I'm shocked that this only took me two attempts and I'll tell you what, it was complete luck. This is one of the first parts where I was going to throw in the towel but for all our hard work, we are treated to this. Jake, wait! Don't move. We killed you. I done washed your bleed. How pretty like. Bleeding isn't the same as dying. 
And I'll teach you the difference if you don't tell me where to find the other guys who were there that night. Fuck you. Look, asshole. I've got no problem doing a bit of pig sticking. <sighs> so simple. Big boss man wants a little kid dead. We find out y'all's alive. And. And. What do you mean? Who gave the orders? It's a brother, y'all. Jake, what the hell happened? So Mac basically gives us some semblance of open world options here and who we're going to deal with next. The trouble is, this game isn't open world. This is the aptly titled Dead End. Here we have the army man who sells guns and ammo. We have a drug dealer over here who buys off all the drugs you collect. And we have Mac's garage where you can customise your bike, which by the way, has absolutely no effect on how it controls. This whole world is fucking tragic, by the way. Like I said, it's another husk of what could have been. You can tell there should have been more here. The team just wasn't up for the task. Like you'll run over to somewhere you think you should be able to reach and the game just resets you. It's so jarring. It took me a solid five minutes of running around to even find the drug dealer. I also decided to buy the army bike because I've always liked that style and fuck navigating these menus any longer than required. So I'm gonna tackle these kingpins in order, I guess. I don't really see the point in messing around with that. Let's go. This time the game gives us some mercy and we don't actually have to drive to where we're going. This dude punches this man and has an existential crisis for a split second. Are you fucking asshole? Call yourself a fighter? Hit him again! Lots of A button mashing later, and this jabroni says we're good with our hands. Well, have you seen the fucking size of them? Then bizarrely, he wants to race us as a favor? Fuck me, it's like a 12 year old wrote this game. What's your name, by the way? My name is Jeff. As I said, all the bikes control the same in this game. There's no alterations that can be done, which is odd for a game that's 50% racing. So basically, you're just battling with the steering, trying not to crash until this torture ends. Shit! Oh, shit! God damn, what a race. This game is fucking deluded. After another god awful stretch of biking that included this unbelievable sight where some splash damage was so strong it led to the most gruesome death I've ever seen. <laughs> and a 700 foot power slide with a large man on the back of the bike. We arrive at some of the weirdest cutscenes in the game. I don't know what to say, I'll just have to show you the highlights, I guess. Fresh out of camp, death wish. It's D. This mother trucker likes to pound flesh, but not always his own. But if he ain't riding with the load, he's the fights are literally just mashing A and occasionally pushing X to break their guard, so we'll just ignore them. Some say this man can reach into a tiger's throat and rip it inside out by the ball. This guy's the one we shot up. Toledo's boy. Yeah. I know. Who? Who was it? Which one of you cocksuckers put money on this shit? You really think he's got a fucking chance? Against me? Are you all deaf? Who? I. I am the champion. Nobody else. There is honor in here. In this ring. He has none. This one left his brother to die and didn't even bother to lift a finger to help the poor boy. Fuck you. Oh, it speaks. You call ten men chasing two without reason and then killing an innocent kid honorable? 
True, I tis. Perhaps twas a dishonorable thing to do, but it was right. Killing your maggot brother. How did it feel for you? Did you cry? Eventually, we fight the big man, Meat Hook himself. And strangely, you're not going to believe this, but. Yeah, it's just mashing A and X again. By the way, when you're in melee combat, sometimes there'll be a pop-up for a rage attack, which always kills the enemy. They are very long and very annoying QTEs, but here's what they look like. Somehow, Meat Hook survived that stamp on the back of a neck, and we're in another bizarre cutscene. Fuck your gaze. Tell me why you did it. That's who we are. That's not an answer. I was told to kill you. Who? Who told you? The fact that the audience isn't following where the people are and are jumping around cheering while two men are huddled in a corner while one gets stabbed is one thing, but then this. And then we'll just plonk back in dead end. This is probably the most bizarre scene in the game. So we just set off from Mac's garage in dead end, right? Then immediately we're driving back into dead end, calling Mac on the radio. Why we're doing this, I just cannot tell you. Then Ellie answers the radio, who was Mikey's girlfriend, and I swear to God I spent the whole game panicking that Jake was just going to dry hump his dead brother's girlfriend into oblivion. Apparently, this huge factory that is literally right next to the place where Mac lives is where the person we're looking for operates. Anyway, we head over to the drug stand where I've been selling drugs constantly, and now there's a new guy here who gets us to run an errand for him to make a meeting with a devil's hand supplier. Why didn't we just do this to begin with? I've been here for how long now? Next to the fucking place? Anyway, this errand, if you can believe it, taking a package from A to B, shocking. And the mission objective here says, avoid the cops. Let's see how Jakey e. X and Bakey handles that one. I think the best example of just how bad these sections are can be summed up in this moment. I'll just show it to you. What kind of fuck nut mayhem was that? I wasn't even pushing any buttons, by the way. That was the game taking care of itself. Also, the cops are laying down a slalom of spike traps for me, which if you hit, do nothing, by the way. But then two suicidal cops drive into their own roadblock and somehow this happens. The drug dealer is surprisingly not helpful, so we choke him on a gas pipe. I don't know how Jake has just murdered about 50 police officers on one road, driven back, tortured this drug dealer without somehow having a price on his head and wanted posters all over the country. But we kill, I think, the drug dealer and go on another rampage with a pistol drawn. I guess that the other residents of wherever we're living are having as much trouble on the roads as I do, since this has nothing to do with me. By the way, we're on our way to meet a woman, so I think you can guess how that one's going to end. Our lovely barmaid here is being harassed by a pair of lumberjacks, if you can believe that, and we step in and intervene, which is a good thing to do. Women get enough trouble without having to be harassed at work, so we kick the shit out of them. But if this game's message was that you should show women respect and not harass them or objectify them, it throws that message straight down the toilet as we dry hump on a pool table in the middle of a bar surrounded by bodies. These scenes make me feel like I'm watching a film with my parents and a sex scene just pops up out of the blue. This face pretty much captures how it feels. <laughs> We then discuss the young lady's shitty boyfriend, and I think I'm supposed to be immersed in this 12 year old's porn puppet show, but it's not really working. Bang! Next scene, and here we are at an electric fence. Honestly, no connections or anything, just a shot of the remaining husk of a woman, loading screen, then bang. We're then told to steal a fucking tanker from across the road, so we go over and murder some men that somehow know my name. We then proceed to steal the truck. Now, I thought we'd drive the truck right through the fence, yeah? Jakey Flaky Heartbreaker over here has another plan. That plan is to fucking drive the tanker Christ knows how many miles down the road whilst being chased by the police and causing Christ knows how much needless destruction and murder all the way down to a power station that is at a dam. He then shoots his way through all the people who work at said dam, then blows up the tanker from the other side of the river in the power station, which I'm guessing would take down the power for everyone and everything, not just one fence, yeah?
The cops are still shooting at something and we saunter away like nothing happened. About 50 miles away with that pesky fence out of the way, we have to battle our way through the drug farm. A full five minutes in, we find a woman. We smash this dude's head into a TV, killing him, and guess what? Yep. After Jake the sex offender is done, he murders for a few more minutes and the game becomes fucking Crash Bandicoot and we get chased down a hay bale maze by a fucking combine harvester. Which then crashes and gives us a way to one hit anyone that comes near us. A full 10 minutes of cover shooting later, we finally find Colt in the centre of the drug farm for some more Oscar worthy acting. No one uninvited ever made it this far. Congratulations. So to what do I owe this pleasure, Conway? I'm here to wipe my ass with the devil's hand. I'm taking you all down for what you did. Ah, yeah. Back from the grave to take revenge, huh? Sounds like a classic, all right. And I do so enjoy classics. Maybe I should just smoke you out. Now that's pretty clever. Sad, but clever. Of course, since you don't have a way out, you're the one who smoked. Right, now we just have to run out of this burning building that Planet Jake's really just fucking hindered us more than anything else. And Colt's long gone. This poor bastard falls prey to more of Jake's madness. Now, if there's one thing that really sticks out to me looking back at my time with this game, it's this mission. We needed to get through a fence, so we hijacked the tanker, drove it Christ knows how far down the road, killing hundreds on the way, including police, blew up a power station, somehow got back to the farm before anyone noticed, spent 10 minutes shooting through a drug farm, dry humped a woman after murdering a man, got chased by a combine harvester, more murder, blew up said drug farm, again killing countless people, and then killed one more for fun. Now that's that's a pretty long and bizarrely interesting timeline. Not fun, mind you, but a good place to stop, I'd say. No. We're now at the airplane graveyard, again, with more shooting galleries. This part of the mission, I kid you not, goes on for another 30 minutes. 30 straight minutes of bad Gears of War gameplay, with the same fucking guitar riff looping in the background over and over again. It's so bad, it's so repetitive. By the time you get to the boss of this area, which is also bullshit, but we'll get to that in a second, you've been running around for about an hour. Kill me. So this boss fight, Colt the little bitch is in the back of the plane on a gun turret that does a hell of a lot of damage. So you basically have to hop from cover to cover until you manage to damage him enough. He then fucks off inside the plane and you can pick off all the bad boys that have spawned in. And then, when you go into the plane, he hides up the top with two Jasons giving you no cover. At the same time, the game spawns in a shit ton of enemies behind you, leaving you again with no cover. Even if you turn around, kill them all and then go back in the plane, it will just spawn more of them in behind you. It's just the worst game design I've ever seen. Eventually I found out you can just about use the Gatling gun as some sort of makeshift cover and just take pop shots at Colt until he dies. You think this is it? That I'm the last one? That this ain't- ah! oh. That's for what you've done to my town. Ah! That's for trying to kill me. <laughs> That's for Neil. So Colt gets shot in both kneecaps, one of the most painful places to get shot, by the way, and in the penis. And can't you just feel that emotion from the voice actor? And this? Well, this is for Mikey. You remember that name. You hold on to that name in your head. Hold on to it tight. Real tight. Right now. You got it? This cutscene was kind of ruined for me about four hours ago, by the way. Jake meets up with Greasy Steve, inexplicably, and, uh... I've been waiting for you, boy. Oh, yeah? I saw you fighting Blackbeak. 
Yeah, but you know, I noticed you kind of cheated, didn't you? Cheated? I don't think so. Well, I think so. See, I know you had a helping hand during that last fight. You? I didn't want the Mick talking about stuff he had no right to. And I'm guessing that right is yours? You have to catch me to find out. The emotional banter between these two is mwah. We chased the grease boy on our bike and experienced some of the wonkiest physics I've ever seen. What the fuck was that? Eventually the little rat man gets away as a result of one of the least impactful high speed bike crashes ever created. And we for some reason go back to the gas station where we started and uh, there's a woman here. Shockingly, we don't dry hump her to within an inch of her life, but instead give her a lift to a mansion that has a band playing. This is my favorite song. <laughs> yeah, that's a fucking lie. Let me guess, you're looking for a broken jaw. Oh, what's that? Another 20 minutes of mindless cover shooting. Okay then. So Jake and Baker shot every single living human in a five mile radius. And what do you think happens? That was gonna get ugly. You saved us. Thank you. Jesus, I need a smoke. My pleasure, ladies. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Gave me a hell of a lift tonight. He's a speed freak, you know? Always looking for scratch to race his bike whenever he's not blowing it on meth. I heard there's a race coming up, like the Spears 400 or some shit. That's where I'd look if I wanted to find him. Leaving so soon? I gotta fix up my bike if I'm gonna race this guy. He's fast. Faster than me tonight, that's for sure. And they don't call him Greasy Steve for nothing. Perhaps we can meet up another time, lover boy. My name's Claudine. We never speak to this woman again. Okay, girls. Who's ready for round two? So after that mind-boggling sexual encounter, Ellie calls us with Mac, and he explains that if we want to get our bike souped up, we need to go see this guy somewhere. Even though our only family member, Mac, owns a shop that fixes up bikes. You let that sink in. Apparently the part of town that this guy lives in is set in the future that Biff Tannen creates in Back to the Future 2. So this game wants us to go for another 10 or so minutes of mindless corridor shooting with a different skin applied. Eventually our serial dry humper notices his next prey hiding over at a gas station. Then all of the thugs in the area inexplicably start shooting that gas station and then we have to protect it. Which basically means we stand there and shoot everyone while they're shooting a building. It's so fucking bizarre. But then, speaking of bizarre, this is one of the, bear in mind I said one of the most jarring scenes in the whole game so we've just protected this gas station for whatever reason we go around the corner there's a woman being harassed we stop her from being harassed which is a nice thing to do and yet Did you see how that cut straight from that situation like nothing happened, by the way? If I didn't have the footage to prove it, I think I would have thought that was some sort of vivid nightmare. So humps a lot over here, then mask is nine and our men. Eventually we arrive at this mechanic's house for some more Oscar-worthy performances. Jesus. Think you can outsmart a purple heart? Easy, sir. I'm not in the devil's hand. I'm looking for a fella named Barnes. Talk! My Uncle Mac sent me. Mac Markham, from Dead End. He knows him. And why should I believe your story? 
because it's the truth. Max Ed Barnes has the fastest engines, and I got a race coming up. I'm Barnes. Sir, my name's Jake. You must be dumb as hell to fight past all this shit to find me. I got a score to settle with the devil's hand. We all do. So you want an engine, huh? Get your bike. You made it this far. Let's see if you are worth my time. I'll even use my shitty bike to give you a chance. Oh, and of course, an explicable race for no reason in the mountains. We were just nowhere near. We are apparently the first person who has ever beaten him. So he gives us a new engine and it's off to the races. By the way, our hands don't match up to the handlebars because of course they don't. There's only five bikes in the whole game you can ride. So that's a bit too much to expect. After a bit more racing, Greasy starts lobbing handfuls of dynamite at us, which are a little troublesome to avoid. But like everything in this game, it's terribly implemented. So you just have to power through it. We're then awkwardly thrown into a shooting section. Now, while you're in these parts, you have no control over your bike pretty much. You can't choose when these slow-mo sections begin or end. You're just at the complete mercy of the game. Eventually, after around 140 pistol shots to the back, the chase is over. I gotta say, I really don't appreciate what you did to Meat Hook. I had to, man. He could have put the finger around me. I think you know that's not a good idea. We're just gonna talk for a couple minutes, okay? Why did the Devil's Hand kill my brother? And why are they trying to kill me? Your names were passed down. By who? And why? It was Pretty Boy. He tells us what to do. Who's Pretty Boy? I seen him, but I ain't never talked to him. Figures. So where is he? Pretty Boy has two right-hand men, Triple Six and King Dick. They'll probably find you. But listen, <laughs> don't you get it? He's gonna come and fuck... Hey, hey, what are you doing? Good talk, Steve. Now let's see you slip out of this one. In order to work our way further up the ladder, we have to do some eavesdropping on some drug boys from the Devil's Hand. Pretty easy stuff really, they're all over the place, I've killed about 2,000 of them. Now I present you with one of the most nonsensical cutscenes I've ever seen. Beer and smokes. Now. Never too early for a beer, ain't that right? Fucking asshole bartender always gets me piss water though. Don't you get me none of that weak ass pussy beer. You fucking hear me? Speaking of time. I gotta go pick up some blow from them King Dick fellas. I can't stick around. Dick don't like it if I'm late. Mind if I come along? Get him! Now pause. You see that at the top of the screen there? Yeah, zoom in a bit. It says, aim your gun to intimidate him. Never has this been fucking mentioned before now. And never does it get mentioned again. I didn't notice this the first time I played this level. Wanna see what happens when you catch up with him and you don't do that? Did I mention this game is in development for about five years? By the way, to intimidate someone, you have to aim your reticle at them. Apparently, it doesn't matter how far away you are. Where do I find King Dick? Oh, well, sir, he owns that there buckaroos in San Alfonso. Strip club? Yes, uh huh? Time to say hello to the ladies. Ah, oh, God, no. Look at the fucking size of this man's hands. This is normal hand size in this universe. I can see why someone might be called King Dick. The other girl has this lovesick asshole banging on her door. She's stuck because she's afraid to go out. Sorry to hear that. Hey, I'm an old friend of King Dick's. You hear? Afraid I can't help you. Susie could. But like I was saying, it doesn't sound like she'll be here anytime soon. I'll just have to go and get her then. Where does she live? Don't tell this man is a serial dry humper. We're killing the police again. Why? I'm not really sure. I, I, I don't know how we're still walking around, to be honest. Why 
Watch this. This happens for no reason. The textualist serial dry humper arrives at the scene, and it seems this hippie we donkey punched earlier is alive and well and threatening a woman in a trailer park with a hammer. That's a natural sentence that makes sense in this game. It's a surprise! A goddamn surprise! Back off now. I'm gonna come back and slice you up, bitch. You hear me? Thank You're you. Mine. Thank you. Come on. We need to stop him. Please stop Get on. him. Turns out this woman had a sawn off, by the way. He had a hammer. What? After what was honest to God, 22 shotgun shots to the back. Johnny finally falls over. The women are still being represented wonderfully over here, as you can see. Can I have a word? Privately? Sure, follow me. I gotta do this while we talk, but <laughs> this dance is on the house, honey. I should fucking hope so. Your texture work is terrible. I hear you're oh looking God, for King Dick. Me. Forgive me, Susie. I respect the wedding. I don't know where he is, but... I know what he's doing. Well, all these fucking missions are starting to blow into one, and I'm beginning to feel like I'm having some sort of aneurysm. So I'll quickly fly over this for you, okay? We still have like four kingpins and four hours of gameplay left. Jake runs over to a casino and speaks to a prostitute who does not know where King Dick is. Jake kills a lot of people. Jake runs into the street, kills people and speaks to another prostitute who does not know where King Dick is. Jake runs into another casino, kills everyone and speaks to another prostitute who finally knows where King Dick is. Now guess what? We kill more people, have to head to the roof to avoid the police who have not been mentioned until this point, then kill all of the police while escaping, so we have yet again evaded nothing, making this diversion pointless, and we escape. Jesus Christ. You know that girl who says, I, I wrote a blog post a while ago about why I f***ing hate video games, because this is what it does, it appeals to like the male fantasy. If she played this game, I think her head would explode, because I feel like mine's about to. So here we are at King Dick's mansion, and you guessed it, it's a shooting gallery. Strange thing though, for some reason, all of my bullets have been taken away, and I need to call these guys that are out of my range to open the gates to continue. So I look around, and lucky what I find. What? Dry humping refills your fucking ammo. Oh, oh, I'm feeling dizzy, boys. I'm feeling dizzy. Help me. After more of the most repetitive gameplay I've ever experienced in my whole life, we make it to King Dick's abode. A perfect place to hide such excellent goods. And the thanks for finding such an ingenious location goes to myself. God forbid any of you would get sake. God forbid anyone would make such a mistake. If so, we would have to add you to the box. Just as an example, gentlemen, this little piggy didn't I genuinely can't tell if those are dicks or fingers. This little piggy made roast beef. Shit gave me food poisoning. And this little fucking piggy worked at Buckaroos and got one of my men killed. Who the fuck is that? Who the fuck dares interrupt me? Bring him to me now. You heard the man. Now comes what is actually one of the hardest fights in the game. King Dick is throwing dynamite at you, and as you can see, the splash damage in this game is fucking insane and puts little Jakey into a stun lock. Eventually though, I do find the spot that the splash damage can't quite get to me. Ah, time for some more heart-chilling action. If this is the end, you better give me an explanation, you fuck. Get up. 
I don't get up for nobody but myself. Don't make me ask twice. Tell me where to find Pretty Boy. I'm not telling you shit. I changed my mind. Take a seat. What do you think you're doing? This little piggy wouldn't squeal. <clears throat> this stupid little piggy refused to deal. Sick rhymes, brother. God damn it! All right, fuck! That whore, Brandy, find her. She's on the outside and trying to fuck her way up the ranks to be Pretty Boy's primo. No broad should have that much power. You rotten son of a bitch! These QCs are fucking bizarre. You don't know the half of it. They literally just stop the scene. Anyway. He's fucking dead. Nice hearing your name get mentioned out of the blue in this part of the game only. And now you'll never be mentioned again. I wonder how many times that'll happen. Next on the list is Triple Six, which is hands down the worst name I've ever heard in my entire fucking life. So I'll hop on my bike to begin the mission. Then I hop straight back off again. And... I'm sorry. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Oh look, it's Triple Six. Completely uncut scene, by the way. You guys smell that? I mean, how could you miss it? That unmistakable stench of dead end. God's own personal shithole. I mean, no offense. I just hate coming here. No matter what the reason. You? <laughs> Today you're the reason you You know what kind of mess you're in? Pretty boy asked me to come and find you personally. And that's not good, Jake. That's a really, really bad thing. Mm-hmm. Really, really bad thing. Mm-hmm. You must be triple six. Greasy Steve said you'd find me right before he exploded. What a fucking idiot! Some people just can't keep their mouth shut! What an entrance! You okay, son? Did you see the look on their faces? You should see the I fucking look on mine, mate. Poor. Mac, you crazy son of a bitch. Oh, shit. I gotta get more ammo. Be right back. I paused the recording by accident so you don't actually get to see me shoot a bunch of people in the face and then take an awful drive to the mountains. But when we get there, we meet this clown. Hey, buddy. I'm looking for triple six. Fuck off. I'm busy. What's your problem, asshole? Uh, I knew this was a bad idea. Excuse me? This fucking parcel. Uh, fuck. Listen, if you want to talk to triple six, you need to speak to the right people. People like me, okay? Nobody in the sawmill building will help you. They are too scared to stop work. <laughs> I'm not scared though, but I need your help. Very fast. You just told me to fuck off. I am so stressed. I apologize, mister. Uh, I have lost my packages, which I give to Triple Six. I have to hide the small parcels of my wheat in the area from the cops. But I need to get the last few. Uh, you look like men who can get things done, yeah? <laughs> you find the packages quickly, and I tell you whatever you want. And why the hell can't you do this Easter egg hunt yourself? His people are watching. If I am strange, 
they will know something is wrong. You're pretty strange, my friend. I don't think you have to hide small packages of weed from the cops while you work at the sawmill of a serial killer leader of a biker gang. So now we actually do go on an Easter egg hunt, running around this massive area in search of seven boxes. Basically, every time you find a box, it's accompanied by some thugs that you have to shoot in the face. Nothing complicated, really. Look at this, though. There's just this stairway to a hollowed out tree that they had to block off with a random boulder because it wasn't finished. I also get the achievement Master of Massacre, which is for killing 500 fucking devil's hand. Jesus Christ, what an achievement to even play this game long enough to do that. But I'll give you another example of the amazing combat in this game. Anyway, after way too long running around that prefab field, we returned the drugs to the lumberjack. So this game wants us to do busy work because you know, when a game has been in development hell for five years and it comes out a half-baked piece of shit, one thing you really want to do is drag the player face first through this shit pie as slowly as possible. Even Rapey Jakey has had enough. Oh look, another five minute long drive. Okay, two minutes where we have to avoid the police. Well, I'm not really sure why they even mentioned that because we see one and they blew themselves up. <laughs> Once we get from the mountain to what appears to be downtown LA, some fog jumps out and slags off our dead brother again. But it's all right. I know how to deal with melee people by now. Oh. Then the game just leaves us in dead silence. Honestly, not a sound. Look, there's no instruction on what to do other than that. Return to your bike that flashed up straight after I killed the last goon. Is that it? Is that why we came here? Oh God, just let me in a fucking sawmill. Back at the lumberjack, we catch him bitching. I can't help but think that Jake is a literal representation of the player expressing their anger with the game devs here. Never do things the easy way. Now where is triple six? He's at the... He's at the... Old Moon Ranch. The hippie comes. Yeah, gone to uh, shake them down for their meat. You better not be I lying. Swear. So we rock up at this hippie commune for some reason. Wasn't he in the fucking sawmill? Then Triple Six magically appears, like he's the one following me around. You got company, motherfuckers. What the fuck? How do your hands not line up? Just put all the handlebars in the same place on the model. Oh, guess what? Yeah, another five minute frustrating rubber banded drive through hell itself. Jake whips his gun out and I'll go straight for the kill. Right. Of course. Well, of course. Holy unskippable QTEs, Batman. Has Jake had sunglasses on every time he rides a bike? Weird. I feel like I've given you ample of these, but here's another example of the game not being able to handle its own set pieces. Eventually, we get to a sawmill, maybe a different sawmill to the one we were at earlier, I don't know. But in an amazing twist of game design and keeping the player invested and on their toes, it's a 30 minute shooting gallery. There's this bit though, that makes a man wanna tear his remaining hair out. So you're on a lift with a turret and the big silver bit of the floor in front of it is a pressure plate. So when enemies step on it, it brings the lift back down. So it's basically the most tedious turret section ever made. How great. Quite some time later, we finally get to the office where Triple Six resides. Is that a double bladed chainsaw? Stay where you are, Sputnik. Fucking Sputnik, what? They say you're as mean as your daddy. What do you know about my father? Enough to know that the boss wants his boys dead. Why does pretty boy want me dead? Pretty boy? Pretty boy? <laughs> Don't you know anything? Caesar is the boss, idiot. He is the devil's hand. Oh, okay. So just throwing another random name on the pile there. I'm a rough. So frustratingly, the game might have cottoned on to the fact that the player can just whip out a gun in a melee fight. So they've made it impossible to use guns. So what do we do? We basically just have to spam attack and hopefully dodge this clown's chainsaws attacks. We do this shit little dance with Triple for a while and then somehow this happens. Tell you, but 
not this, please. I think you'll be okay. There's plenty of room under that thing down there. Jesus. But well, aren't you the shriveling little prick? I don't know much. Just Caesar wants you dead because of your dad. Why? He was in the gang with Caesar. They must have fell out. Because he doesn't want you in the picture either. Everything was planned. You and your brother were on the hit list. When those guys out by the Dutch oven heard you were Toledo's boys, they did what they were told. Take you out. Look, that's all I know. Pretty boy talks to him, and he doesn't tell me much. I don't even know where Caesar is. They keep it quiet for security. Hey, Jake, he must stop it. I'll tell I'll set you up with, with dough. With dough. What, whatever you want. We, we can make deal. Just just cut me loose, will ya? Tell me where pretty boy is. Not too hard to find. Just check out the races. He's not too far from them. I'll be honest. Of all the scum I've taken out, you've been the most helpful. Unfortunately, I'm not in the business of making deals. Jay, no! Come back! I'll make you rich! Please! No! 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 Okay, what's next? <laughs> What? Everything okay? Pretty boy is not the one hunting me. It's someone named Caesar. And it's got something to do with my dad. But I need to find Pretty Boy to get to Caesar. I think Jake's beginning to see how convoluted this has all died, become. King Dick told me about some girl named Brandy. I don't know her, but if she's got anything to do with Pretty Boy, then try Mud Springs Canyon Speedway. It's the biggest track in the state. Fucking excuse me. Ah, you can't beat the smell of engines. You're brandy, right? If you must know, it's mostly vodka. Yeah, that joke doesn't make sense because he said you are. The name's Jake. I'm offering up my services. I hear you work for Pretty Boy. I believe I can help you guys. Careful. If you start dropping names like that, you'd better be sure of yourself. Look. I'm new here, and I'm not afraid of getting my hands dirty. How's about after I win the qualifier, I work with you two? There's nothing in that glass oh, either, love. You'll have to win first. Off you pop. You think she gets these outfits custom made? Time for a race on a different bike for a change. Control's exactly the same, like walking through a puddle of treacle and flip-flops. But somehow, I win. Good enough? There may be a degree of skill lurking behind your somewhat thick aesthetic. But consistency is what I require. Anyone can have a lucky race. Win the next one too. And make sure you do. I'm going to place a small wager. Put everything on it. I'll make you rich. Excellent. And if you don't win, darling, I'll make you dead. Wait. What? Another one straight after. <laughs> nah. I've We've done it. A healthy sum today. Don't make me do another one, Perhaps, please. Quite surprisingly, you're not an amateur after all. Winning may be your thing, but what makes a man is his losses. Ah, uh, really? I believe I understand you, Jake. Very well. Let's make this official. Go to the Bergenstock Mines. There you will find a stellar bike that Pretty Boy and I have had our eye on for some time. It belongs to a miner there called Orson. Bring the bike to me, and I'll pay you, handsomely. Okay, here we are. S somewhere. I'm not here for trouble, gentlemen. <laughs> Excuse me? Listen, buddy, I'm not here to kill you. No, just 50 of your mates. What the hell are you doing then? 
I know you guys hate the devil's hand, and you're not alone. You like my hat? I don't blame you fellas for jumping me back there, but you're gonna have to give me some information. I need to know where to find Orson. Okay. He isn't here today, but he lives in Fogwood, house by the graveyard. For your sake, I hope you're sure about that. Wow, we didn't kill him. I think we can call him the sole survivor. Now we arrive at a graveyard and some devil's hands are defacing Shaky Jakey's brother's grave. That just so handily happens to be located at this graveyard right next to the house that we were sent to. And they're pissing on it too. W weird. So they die. A Morgan flooding in. Then they die. And now we have another issue with fucking splash damage, right? We have this fucking cowboy throwing dynamite at us. And ooh, it took me a while. It took me a while. I'm not going to lie. So the house we're looking for, which is apparently directly next door to where our brother's damn grave is. And oh no, a woman. Way. You're the devil. Excuse me? You're the devil. Excuse me. <laughs> what? Was that Orson? Who else takes the Lord's name in vain like that? I'm looking to borrow his bike, ma'am. Oh, that bike. He loves that thing more than me. More than anything. <laughs> Whew. Good morning, bourbon. So at least date Jake has some limits, I guess. I sure like to help you. Mm -hmm. I want you to help me. Seems like this will be the first simple thing all week. Where did you say Orson's keys were again? Stupid keys on the stupid hooks. Stupid, stupid. Here you go, ma'am. Bet you can't drink it all in one gulp. Of course I can. Oh, fuck it, then again. Dreams. Hey, hey, that's my bike. I'm calling the cops. I saw you. The cops, you say? Well, it seems that Jake can headbutt helmets, so I think we'll be just fine. So the game takes us for a mine and bounces me off a couple of walls, and then. I feel like I've seen this before. Okay, more mines. This man is really causing some fucking chaos, isn't he? What is happening? Hey, hey, hey. Well, watch this game handle its own slow motion set pieces. Look at the cop. I don't even know what to say anymore. So with no explanation at all, we're suddenly back with Mr. T. From what I've heard you've been up to, glad I was wrong. Why are you here? Yeah, why are we here? I got a problem, Tyrell. I need to fix some explosives to this bike. Sounds like a waste of a good bike. Not if it helps me take out Pretty Boy. Yeah, okay. Fine. I know what this means to you. Jake, I'll love it with you. I need some help too. Here we go. One of my privates didn't report this morning. I've been trying to look after him. He's an ex-Vietnam. Name's Vanderbilt. Just a kid, though. Like Mikey. Didn't come back so well. You know? In the head. I don't think Mikey went to Vietnam, so I think you're basically just calling him a retard. What can I do? He lives out at the trailer park near San Alfonso. You mind checking up on him? So we get to the trailer park, and we find a young man in question dealing some drugs. What the fuck is the matter with you? What were you giving those animals? Jesus, what the hell? 
Who are you? Tell me, or face Sergeant Tyrell. Your choice. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get by, man. Not this way. You can do better than this. I... I don't know. You really think so? Whoa, wait, 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 wait. So we just met this clown. He has the smallest arc in fiction, and the game wants us to feel bad about this? And did you hear how he reacted to getting blasted to death with hundreds of 30 millimeter bullets? Help. Help. Fuck me. Oh yay, shooting gallery. Wait, what was that showing me? Right, of course. Death by caravan, I guess. Fight back with ANX against the caravan. Oh wow. Oh wow. Oh wow. Time for Jake to give the terrible, terrible news. Well. I'm really sorry, Tyrell. I saw him. He was speaking with the devil's hand. Got a lot of money for something. But he was killed before I could find out what it was. Did you speak to him? Yeah. He looked, uh... Defeated. Thanks. Thanks, Jake. Explosives line the base of the engine. Real hard to spot. Now, get out of here. Back with Brandy Big Tits. Well done, Jake. I should give you an even thousand, of course, but seeing as you're still quite new, I've come up with something. Take it or leave it. Sounds fine, Brandy. Pretty Boy is quite a powerful man. He has what? Turn of idiots. Although he'd never speak with someone like me in person, I'm sure he'll be very pleased with your position. Oh, I really hope you. I don't like the look of this place. So we're fucking back at the mansion where Fried Eggs and Jakey had the dry hump seven way. Because of course we are. Then we blow up the bike that we attached the bomb to by shooting it. So did we really need the bomb? Oh, God. Another shooting gallery. So he's basically two-faced and can ride a bike around a slight turn with no hands. Very talented. Fuck. Now I see why they call him Pretty Boy. Let's go, we're making a run for it. Yeah, yeah, hold on. Mobile shooting gallery. Probably the worst of all, really. Let's see how many shots he takes to go down, shall we? Such realism. Now why did you go and do that? <sighs> that was fun, Jake. I had... What's the plan? He's coming with us. <sighs> Ow. Well, pretty boy. I was told that you wanted to find me, so I saved you the trouble, and I found you instead. A regular private dick, aren't you? Funny. Why were your boys after us? My brother and I haven't done shit. There's a reason why everyone in the hand knows the Conway name, Jake. Truth is, we'd given up looking for you a few years ago. Thought you must have joined your old man in the grave. What? No. He left. My God, Jake. Have you really been kidding yourself all this time? Come on. You really don't know. <laughs> Didn't that idiot uncle tell you anything? 
so Jake thought his dad had abandoned him, but now he's dead. Oh, Jake, Jake, Jake. Don't be so gloomy. I'm very happy to have the opportunity to tell you that there has been a kill order out for the whole Conway bunch. Your daddy, your mommy, you, your baby brother, and in the big old rule book, kill orders are for life. So what happened? Oh my god, this writing. Oh, I don't know. One day we were looking for him, next day Caesar says he's dead. Happens all the time. Why should we question him? And where is this unquestionable leader? I didn't get these scars for my candor. One thing I will tell you is this. He's stronger than you, he thinks faster than you, and he is ten steps ahead of you every single minute of every single day. And he was built without an off switch. And he will not stop until you are eating the very earth you're walking on. Mm, I think I'll kill him. It's been a pleasure, Jake. Holy shit, One Punch Man! I get it. You're done. One last question. Where is he? Look for the fresh ink. I think I spelled his name right. The pleasure's been all mine. <laughs> this is actually pretty grim. Shame it's six hours into this shit heap of a character that popped up out of thin air and has disappeared just as fast. <laughs> Back at Mickey's grave, me and Mac have been doing some cleaning. You always said he disappeared. Pretty boy told me there was a kill order on us. On all of us. I... I knew about the kill order. I knew they wanted Toledo dead. He told me himself. But not you two. You was just boys. Besides, Toledo made me promise I would never tell you. Neither one of you. My job was to protect you from the devil's hand and raise you like you was my own. And I'd done that. Best I could. I just never thought they'd come after y'all. Not after all this time. No. Why would they? How'd it start, Mac? God damn it, Jake. You know I hate breaking a promise. See, your daddy once raced a guy from the gang named John McKenzie. But it wasn't your normal cash race. It was to win a girl. Ah, uh, of course it was. Your mama. Toledo was a hothead. He got drunk, gambled her when he ran out of money. Don't give me that look, boy. William weren't no saint. He was my best friend. But something was messed up in him. Made him do stupid shit sometimes. And he lost the race. But he was never gonna hand your mama over to nobody. No, she was furious when she found out what he'd done. You don't say. You and Mikey was just little. John was a violent son of a bitch. And he went on a rampage, talking up a storm about traitors and his property and all sorts of shit. And then the fellas in the gang, well, they bought into it. Toledo brought you boys over one night saying he had to leave town. Took your mama with him. He made me swear not to say anything. He ran. Same as I would have done. John? John was insane. I mean, fucking insane. So... Insane. Following after Toledo to God knows where. Then some folks came back saying, your parents were caught and killed. Others saying, John never found them. He made the story up so he don't look like a pussy. Caesar, John McKenzie? I reckon so. That motherfucker got all wound up running the hand and forgot he had a score to settle. What? What is this game? Where did that come from and how did we not instantly die? Mac, you okay? How are you still intact? <coughs> yeah, I'm okay. So now we have to take an injured Mac back to his shack, but on the way we get attacked. And for some reason, the button mashing has suddenly gotten twice as hard. Like, I am deaf gripping the controller and spamming to hell and back, but this keeps failing. And yes, this helicopter just starts shooting the road. We then get hit and... Incredible. And check this one out. Yeah. 
awesome. Somehow, I ran out of fucking time. Okay, if you insist. Right, we got Mac back. Please let this end. Let this fucking game end. But don't underestimate Caesar. He's gonna be stacked, that's for sure. Every gang member in the state will be with him. I've come this far. Looks pretty windy in there. A favor by killing him. Mac, I don't Jake, care how you, you, you <laughs> He just walks off mid-sentence. Jake, you read me? Tyrell? Jake. I looked into that situation from before. Shit's hit the fan. The devil's hand hijacked one of my shipments. It must have been what my guy out at the trailer park was doing. Can't you get your boys on it? Not this time. The truck ain't legit. Ain't nothing in there I can admit to knowing about. It was last seen heading to Fogwood. You gotta help me out. I'll see you right, Jake. See me right? With what? I'm on. More fucking busy work? Take care of Mac. I'll be back as soon as I can. Oh yay, let's chase a fucking truck down the road in forced slow motion. How fun! Have you noticed that every scene starts with people pointing at him like it's some sort of surprise I'm there? So I shoot a bunch of people. The weapons are for, <coughs> for his army. Where is he? I, uh, I don't know. Please. Please. Get out of here. Holy shit, and we let another man live. What is that, two? We drive the truck back. Hi, Mr. T. Take whatever you need. This'll do. Jake! Jake! Help! Ellie! They're here! The devil's hand are here! Tell me what's happening. I can hear them! They're close! Please don't make me drive back. Maybe there is a god. Oh shit, he's hung up! Not only that, but he's had a note stabbed into him as well. Off we go, I guess. Please end. In a shocking sign of pity, it doesn't make me drive anywhere, and there isn't any busy work. Are you, are you okay? Did Look they hurt you? Jake. Eyes. Jake. Hello, Jake. I see you found my note. Thanks for coming. Sorry about the old man. I had to make sure you'd get the message. Jake, where's Mac? And look, I see you met my daughter, Elle. She always was a problem child. Ellie? Wow, what a twist. Did M. Knight write this? I hate him. I've always hated him. Listen, Jake, please listen. I ran away years ago. He beat me. He beat my mom. I still got the scars. That's when I started hearing the stories about people he killed. I heard what he'd done to your family, and I came to find you to see if it was true. Why wouldn't it be true? What, would you go in there looking for gravestones? I and he was so sweet. Even after all the things my father did, I helped him and Mac however I could. You knew who Triple Six was. You pushed me to keep going. Even when I wasn't sure anymore if I could. For Christ's sakes, why didn't you just tell me? I wanted to. I really did, but I just couldn't. Because, you know, don't want to ruin this I great story arc. Was, but you were the only person who seemed strong enough to get to him. And I had a family at last, Jake. I had Mikey and Mac and then you. I didn't want to let that go. I'm so sorry. Please don't dry hump. Watching this dysfunctional fart is such a smile. I just wish I could hear that babble. Ellie, look at me. How many of them? Has she fucked? An army. They're everywhere. This is the end, Jake. Maybe, but not for us. Get up on those bleachers. Now. Caesar! Show yourself! Strange. He shouted and somehow got quieter. Howdy, cowboy. 
Howdy, man, I've just found out about. Uh, little orphan Jakey. <laughs> Nobody to sing you sweet lullabies. No one to come home to. <laughs> I guess you're wondering what happened to Pops. Huh? He left quite a mark on me. You kill them! Just like you kill everything, you bastard! I hate you! Such I angst we have on display here. Dead. Shush now, baby. Daddy's talking. You, you see, see Jake? Jake? I was in retribution. Back at the start, I had big plans. Plans to expand. But your dad... Well, he wasn't too keen on that. Only things he cared for were beer, racing, and your mom. Mark on the guy. We were the kings. We could do anything. But your daddy was always too nice and goody goody. But a man's got to take advantage of what the good maker has seemed to bestow upon him. Am I right? I'll take that as yes. You can't hear him. You just said that. I started doing what. I won. And your pop didn't like it. I mean, really. What's wrong with a little violence here and there? Jake! No reason to feel guilty. Wow, I've killed well over 500 people by this point, actually. Anyway, I tried to keep it all quiet. But really, I wasn't happy taking orders. Killing people is just too much fun. And scared people give you anything you want. Isn't that right, soldier? It was so easy. I started the devil's hand to harvest this rich crop I'd found. Your poor old dad lost everything. Aside from his woman, that is. So I made him a bet. We race. One last time. He wins. He keeps everything. And I cover his debts. But if he loses, I take his bike and your mom. Not the bike! Damn idiot, lost! Slashed my face when I went to rightfully take my prize. He took the bike, his bitch, and ran. I looked like a fool, Jake. A damn fool! Can't have that. No, sir. Can't have it. I chased him for a long time, Jake. I found them too. Do them both up a fucking cliff and watch them drown like cats in a bag. So the fool didn't kill them then. Enough of this. Ellie and I are leaving here with you dead. You hear me? Oh, I hear you. Oh, he, he can hear him. But I don't think we're reading the same book, Jake. The way I see it, the good book says you flame out here, right about now. Nothing has stopped me so far, not even death. So tell me, what makes you think you'll survive, John? Kill him! Now! 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 <laughs> <laughs> guess, guess, guess what it's time for. <laughs> Fucking batshit weird. What is going on? Just tell me one thing. Did you know he had a kill order on me? No, I didn't. I haven't seen him for years. So why didn't you say anything? I always meant to, but I guess I always chickened out. I thought you guys would hate me for who my father was. 
Mikey meant so much to me. And Mac... Mac was like a real dad, you know? I guess I can see that. What else can you see? Fuck all in them glasses. Right up ahead. Hold on! Another bike chase scene. Yay! This time, however, the game plonks us between two tankers whilst we have Caesar shooting rockets at us. It's not fun. Not at all. But this made my fucking day. Oh, God. I really do not know where Jake is keeping all these rockets or how he's reloading the fucking thing. This poor girl still got hit. Fucker. Keep her. Damn it. They got the brake cable. What? Don't stop How? It's not like we have a choice. Ellie, keep you down here. Yes, but when I jump. Take the handle. Hold them tight and straight. What the hell are you doing? How the hell is These two have some amazing balance, man. Stay cool. Ellie! <laughs> what? It's over. We did it, Mikey. What the? That is the most casual death I've ever seen. Also, that lighter would have gone out. I know they're windproof, but not that windproof. Are you okay? Depends. We aren't dead, are we? Not yet, anyway. Let's go home. And there we go. One last weird black screen, then popping back into the game and the credits roll and I have no music. Nothing. This is it. That's just how it ends. Fuck me. Right, there we go. Ride to Hell Retribution is done. Obviously, I had to cut out a lot of this video. The shooting and driving sections go on forever. I did, however, try to leave as much of the ridiculous cutscenes intact as I could. The video wound up being a little bit longer than I was aiming for, but hopefully the video remained entertaining all the way through, so it didn't feel as long for you to watch it as it did for me to play it. I honestly feel like I've joined an elite club of video game self-masochists by completing this game, and not only completing it, but then having to re-watch it all and edit it all down. What a ride to hell <clears throat> hmm so for today's special phrase um if you made it this far type hashtag dry humps in your comments so i'll know as per usual zooming across the bottom of the screen are the lovely members of my patreon they are awesome and because of their generosity they got this video early like super early as well if you feel like joining that elite club of self masochists the link is down in the description anyway the next game i have some decisions on whether to do another terrible game which is apparently even worse than this game or a choice between a retro fps from the ps1 or a certain awesome horror game from the gamecube maybe i'll put up a poll or something like that to see what people would like but do feel free to leave suggestions in the comments as well and that's all from me today thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one